today we shall discuss about a very important object oriented concept it is called encapsulation so our today's topic is encapsulation in java as we know the concept of class is a basic things in any object oriented programming so we have to write program in java this means that we have to write a set of classes all classes then can be used to create objects and this way the object orientation is possible so today we'll discuss about the basic concept of class which basically can be achieved with the concept of object oriented principle called encapsulation and the different uh, different elements that is possible in a class so today our cons okay first let us clear the concept of class in java as i told you the ja class is a basic building blocks in any java program that mean using the class you can write the entire java programs so the class basically what exactly a class is so a class in fact is a template that means it basically gives a framework of an object now how an object can be described so in order to describe an object we need many elements for that object so the elements which are very important in any objects are called fields the methods constructor and sometimes special items called blocks and also class within a class called the nested class and another important concept also can be included in an object is called the interface so mainly there are six different items to be incorporated in a class now fields and methods little bit we have familiarity in our last few programs but other three things like constructors and then interface and everything is not known to us at the moment so we shall learn all these things slowly in today we will basically discussed or emphasized on field methods and constructor these three things so now a basic structure in its simplest form will look like which is shown here as we see in this uh, fragments of the programs is basically pseudo program not exactly the program so any class can be defined with its own unique name so it is called the class name usually it is given by the user so user defined name so here uh, so this is the name of the class that you have you are going to build so this is the name and then it consist of two things which is mentioned here as we see a set of it is called the fields or member elements all are member elements method also a member elements uh, particularly it is called fields and other is called the methods so fields and methods are two very important things in any class a class can consist of one or more, zero or more metho methods and zero or more fields there is quite possible that a class does not have any fields also possible that a class does not have any methods but which is really not useful is an useless thing without any fields or any methods anyway so logically a class have zero or more member elements fields and methods 
So, fields is basically a simplest of its form is basically reference variables or some primitive variables that means, objects and other name of the other variables that can be defined. And then methods are basically the operations which are possible to manipulate all the fields variables are there. So, these are basically called data in a class and these are basically called operations in a class. So, these are the two things data and operations when they are punched together it is called encapsulation which we have a little bit learned in our previous lectures. So, here encapsulation means data and operation are to be put together. So, this is the basic structure of the class and let us have a very simple example. Now, suppose a circle, a circle is an object. So, there are number of objects, all the objects are different because of its own center location as well as its radius. The two circles are two objects, they are having either center location or radius or both are different. So, such an object can be defined by its own class. So, here is an example how a class of type circle will look like this. So, this basically if this is the name of the class say circle in this case this circle has two fields one is declared as float type the radius r and another two fields are also declared as float type x and y namely the coordinates of the center. So, here as we see a circle is defined in terms of two data center location x and y and then its radius. So, this basically completes the definition of a circle. However, in this definition we have not included any method. If we in if we include some methods in it, it will basically make a sense. Now, let us see how the different method that is possible in this definition. So, here the circle class that we have dis discussed just now has been augmented with two methods. The name of the methods as we see here one method is called circumference, another method is called area. This means, these are the two operations which can work with if the radius is given to this method. So, they will these two methods will be able to calculate the circumference of the circle using this is the formula and the area of the circle using the standard formula. So, here of course, r is in use however, other two variables namely x and y is not in use. So, we can plan some other methods to utilize x y as well as both all x y and r there. Any of those details description of these things will take the program little bit lengthy. We just now ignore it and we will discuss a detailed usage of all member elements all fields in using some other operations or methods. Anyway, so this basically gives one uh, a form of a class called the circle having three different fields x y r two methods namely circumference and area. So, this way we can define uh, the object the class namely circle here in this case. Now, let us see what is the usage of this class. Now, once you declare a class circle we shall be able to use to declare its objects. So, suppose this is the definition suppose this is the definition of your class which are you have already discussed it and then we can use it uh, to create objects. So, for these things we can create our main class program. So, here is the idea about the main class program we deep. So, this is the class defining the circle category and here is the another class we are defining which is our program
So, here we are defining uh, the program, the name of the program is the name of the program in this case is circle demo 1. So, we have given the name of our own and we have already familiar to the main class declaration by virtue of public static void main string arcs. So, this is the, uh, de, uh, the usual statement to declare a class as a main class using the main method and here you can see we have discussed we have declared one object. We give the name of the object as C and the new is basically the usual operator which basically create an objects of type circle. So, this is the standard syntax that you should follow to create an object of type in this case for example, of type class. So, the object namely C is created here, this object C is created. Once C is created, we can use its different member elements namely the different fields and then also its method. Now, here we see the c dot x basically implies that it is the element x for the object c likewise c dot y c dot r and the values for these fields has been initialized as 0 0.0 for x, 0 0.0 for y, 5.0 for r. So, this basically gives an initialization of an object where the center is located at 0 0 and having the radius 5. So, this way an object is now created with its value in it. Once the object is created then we can use its method to do certain operation. For example, in this case we see uh, we use c dot circumference that means for the object c we call the method circumference that means to return the result of its circumference. So, whenever we call it, it basically use or use this code to calculate the circumference of a circle whose radius is r. In this case, it will calculate the circumference of the circle whose radius is 5. Similarly, in the next statement, it will calculate area of the same circle C and the result will be printed using system dot out dot print ln. So, this is the one method, this is the one class called the main class which basically creates an object of type circle and the name of the object is C and for this object we can access the different elements fields and methods. Methods are basically operations on the data which is there in that objects. So, this way we can use a create objects. Now, so in this example we have created only one objects, but it is quite possible to create the multiple objects having a class definition ready. So, in this example we can see how we can create more than one objects using the same concept that we have learned just now. So, here if we see uh, C 1 and C 2 are the two objects created using this concept new and that these, these are the two objects of type circle. And so, here we see this is the initialization of the first circle having center at 3.0 and 4.0 radius 5.0 and this is the initialization of the another circle whose center is at minus 4.0, minus 8.0 and radius is 10. So, the two circles are now built, two circles having the two centers, two different radius have been built. So, the two circles are created. Now, once the two circles are created, we can call the methods in them. So, for example, as we see in these two statements system dot out dot print ln, we, we use the circumference method to return the circumference of the circle C 1. In this method we see area of the circle C 1. In another statement we use the same thing, but for the circle C 2. 
So, we just now learn about how the multiple objects in this case two objects can be created and all their member elements can be accessed in from the program. So, this is the concept about creating multiple objects and now we will discuss about if we can include more than one classes in a program. So, our next example is towards this. So, we will discuss about multiple classes declaration in a program in a Java application. So, multiple class for example, already we have learned about the circle class, how a circle class can be created and thereby different objects of it can be used. Now, so this is the circle. Now, suppose another object say is a quadriopipillate or a rectangle just we want to create it. Now, so this is suppose example of uh, uh, cuboid and it is basically defined with three parameters height, width and depth. Now, so this is an object like circle right, it has the three member elements and definitely it has its own method. Now, let us see how we can define a class for this kind of object quadripipet here in this case. Now, this is the class definition for this uh, objects and we give the name of this object as a box and as we see the class box contains three data and then it has two methods one is called area and another is called volume. So, a by means of area method if the width, height and depth is given to us, we shall be able to calculate the area total surface area of the box and given this width, height and depth, we will be able to calculate its volume, this is the method for calculation. So, these are the two methods and the three member three fields to define this object. So, now two different classes are defined. Now, this after the definition of these two classes. Now, let us see how we can utilize this class definition to in our program. Now, here is the program which basically use more than one class in the program. So, the name of this class let it be multi class demo we get this is because it is basically is a program which use the different classes that we have just now defined. And here you see uh, the two declaration circle c equals to new circle this basically creates an object whose name is c. In the next statement we create another objects called b of type box. So, the two objects are created once the two objects are created, now definitely we have to give the value to these objects because they are created without any specific value in them. So, we have to initialize the objects. So, for the initialization as we see here, these are the statement that basically initialize the circle objects for its x, y and r value. In So, you can see c dot x implies that it is the x value for the object C like. Likewise, the object B is initialized with its four different values namely with 3.0 and then height 4.0 and depth 5.0. So, the object C is now initialized with its member elements data and now we can access the operations which are defined for each objects in their corresponding classes. So, here we can see in these two statement we access the two methods which are defined in the class circle namely circumference and area. In another statement we access the method area, but it is defined for the class box and another is volume also defined for the class box. So, the operations in each objects are now accessed once their objects are created and so this way we can utilize 
the different elements, the uh, different classes which we can define. One thing is that all the classes that we have defined, we can store in one program, one file. In this case, for example, the class circle and we can store in the program file after this class circle, we can write the program or the codes for the class box, they can be placed one by one and then finally, the main class. So, main class is here multi class demo can be written and all these things three classes, the classes for the class definition for circle, class definition for box and finally, multi class demo it is called the main class which basically creates objects defined by the different classes can be used and all these things can be stored in a file. The name of the file should be same as the name of the main class. So, in this case multi class demo dot java should be the name of the file. So, once all these things put together and you save the file as multi class demo dot java your program is now ready and you can compile it and then run it and then once you run the different result as per the main method will be executed and you will be able to get the output. So, this is the concept we have learned about that how we can create the class and how we can create the different member elements namely the data and operations in it and how the different classes can be used to instantiate the create objects and finally, using those objects how we can solve many problem. In this case we can create a set of classes, class circles or a set of boxes and for each circle and boxes we can create the different geometrical parameters like area, volume, uh, then circumference etcetera, etcetera. Now, so here are few things that I want to highlight it. So, there are three classes in the last example that we have considered out of these three classes, one class is called the main classes which we have told many times. So, main classes because it includes the main methods. So, if you want to run a program successfully, then whatever the classes are there, they should be there and there should be one class called the main class which includes the main method. And of course, in one program only one main class that means, one class with main method should be. You cannot have two classes and in both the classes again main method, it is not allowable. So, you cannot do that and the main class method should be saved as the same name of the main class name, but extension should be dot java which is already there. Now, if you have any program without any main class that means, there is no main method in any class then this program cannot be compiled. So, execution is also not possible if it is not compiled execution is no I mean question. So, that is not possible. So, you should have one program one file the main class should be there this means that that should include the main method. Now, here is an example say suppose you have included two classes circle and then box and then save them as a say temp uh, temp dot, uh, test dot java. If you want to compile it your compilation error will be the output. So, you will not be able to co compile it successfully because in this file uh, test dot java there is no main class. So, this is one important thing that you should uh, consider uh, for example, if you compile this it will usually give this kind of error on your terminal uh, showing that compilation error that means, the class file is not created. Now, so we have discussed about class declaration, the different elements in it namely data and operations. There are many more operations we can include. In fact, there is no limit. There is no limit on how many data should be put into a class. There is also no limitation how many methods should be placed there inside a class, but depends on as per your requirement you should include as many data as many methods in the in a class. Now, let us extend the definition of class circle little bit in a detail manner. Now, whatever the discussion that we have discussed here in this I just want to include one more method all these 
things we have already learned previously. Now, in this class declaration I use one more uh, method in it. The name of the method is set circle and you see in this method it has three parameters. In all the method that we have discussed there is no parameters in them only they are name of the methods without any arguments, but here we declare three parameters namely a, b and c. Now, these three parameters as you see from the code this basically the value a will be assigned to x that means x, y and z will be initialized by these two three variables. So, set circle is in fact is basically to initialize the object initialize an object circle and here is an example. So, this example if you see this is the main class the name of the main class is circle demo 3 and this create two objects c 1 and c 2 and using this set circle we can initialize this c 1 and c 2 objects as the x y 3.0, 4.0 and radius 5.0 for the first and minus 4.0, 8.0 and 10.0 for the second and all these things are as usual. Now, you can see the set circle method is basically initialization attempt. Now, this initialization in Java is possible in more uh, pragmatic way, we will discuss about how the different way this object can an object can be initialized the concept is called constructors. So, we will quickly discuss about the concept constructor now. Uh, so, constructor is basically the concept of automatic initialization and uh, the idea it is that whenever an object is created this method will be called automatically. So, it is no need to call it explicitly for example, the method circumference, the area we have to call it explicitly for an object, but this method whenever object is created automatically it will be executed. And so far the constructor is concerned it has few specific things to be considered. Uh, so, the name of the constructor should be same as the name of the main class method or the class right. If you want to declare a constructor to initialize an object of a class the name of the constructor should be same as the name of the class and it should not have any return type and constructor is basically used to initialize the internal member elements in it. Now, let us have an example and this is a simple example as we see this is the class circle as we have already created earlier and this is the constructor right it basically is similar to the set circle, but the method code is like this one. So, this basically set circle we have to call it explicitly, but this method whenever it is equal we do not have to call it. Now, let us see how we can use it in our program and this is the one program which basically use the constructor and here you can see uh, here. So, so here we can create an object c 1 c 2 and when we call it then we call with the uh, parameters. So, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0 are the parameters which has been used to call it that means, this circle object is created we pass the values the constructor will take this value and pass it to the c 1 objects and then c 1 will be initialized. So, this is the initialization and one more thing there is a little bit mistakes in the typing. So, all these are the capital C you should note it anyway. So, so this is the circle class for example, here is a capital this is a typing mistake anyway. So, the objects are created using the constructor in this case and the rest of the things are the previously discussed concept as we have already have. Now, so the constructor that we have created and now there is a special use of particular keyword is called the this keyword we just want to use it this is a special keyword to resolve certain name collision I can discuss about an example so that I can discuss it. So, in this case uh, this is the simple things that we have discussed set circle and here is the constructor that we have already discussed earlier and suppose a constructor is defined with the parameter like this one. Now, this means that the x value will go to this x value, but this x and this x should not should be should not be same actually. So, the in order to make it distinguished, so what we can do is that we can use the this keyword. So, this dot x means that this x here this dot y means that this y and this dot r means that this r. 
So, by means of using this we can specific specifically mention that this is the member elements belong to this class itself. So, this means it is belong to this class the current class. So, this way we can use it. Now, so then rest of the things are the same and uh, the concept is called multiple construct. So, we have discussed about the constructor concept which basically used to automatically initialize an objects. Now, we will discuss that in a class even you can define more than one constructor. So, more than one constructor is basically helps the Java programmer to initialize an object in a multiple ways. This concept is called the multiple constructor or called the constructor overloading. Now, let us have a quick example about the constructor overloading concept. In this let, let us look at this program. Here we can see this is the one constructor we have defined this is the one constructor we have defined. So, constructor number 1 and this constructor has the three inputs as a parameter and initialize the elements in the object like this way. And in this constructor we only pass the radius r, but others are default value as 0 0. So, this is the second way of constructor and here we initialize in terms of another objects c. So, this is the another way of constructor 3 and here it is also default constructor without any argument we. So, this means that an object can be created without passing any value with only one value with passing an object of type circle itself and sometimes passing three different value. So, these are the three different way uh, four different way rather the way an object can be initialized. Now, here is an example you can see how you use multiple constructor to initialize the objects in different way. So, this is the initialization of objects passing three values to it, the initialization using passing only one as a radius and this basically if C 1 is known this one. So, this means C 3 and C 1 are basically the two objects having the different uh, same uh, member elements called the uh, x, y and r and here is the C 4 is a another object initialization creation without with with a default value default constructor that means all values are 0 0 and radius is 1 in this case. Now, we can see how using the constructor or the overloading constructor concept we can initialize the object in a different way. So, this concept is called the constructor overloading and then all the different objects can be accessed they are methods can be accessed as usual in the previous example that we have discussed about it. So, this is the concept of constructor overloading and there is again one important use of the keyword this I just want to discuss this with an example. So, you can see this example here. So, that this constructor can be used to reference a the method itself as I told you for example, this is the constructor circle that we have discussed circle and we pass this x and y we have already learned about that this dot x equals to x and everything like that. Now, there are few more use of this which is highlighted here illustrated here I will discuss about. Now, here if you see this and then the input parameter that means, this in this case the constructor of this class. So, here basically constructor of this class means the first constructor means this constructor and then we call this constructor with the value this 0 0 and r but it takes the only input as r as a constructor. So, this constructor circle will called which in but in turn call this constructor to initialize it in terms of three different values. Similarly, this is another constructor which use again this operator here the this and then it basically takes the value from this circle c and initialize this as this one. And this is another example by the default constructor without passing any parameter this one. So, this is a another example of this. So, this is basically used for the two purpose to resolve the namespace that means, in the same name or variable if it is used then by using this dot this we can uh, resolve that wh which name basically it implies. So, this is the idea about the constructor and uh, multiple constructor rather obviously, there are few more questions that we will be discussing in our next class. So, we have mentioned earlier that Java is more simple language 
So, why it is simple compared to other languages like and then another thing is that there are many detailed things is uh, ne uh, things needs to be learned prior to experience our good I mean uh, programming. So, we will discuss about the specific some few important things in Java which needs to be learned very carefully. So, in our next lecture we should learn it. Thank you very much.